Well, hello there, guys. How's it going? We're going to be playing a little bit of Operation Modular. Actually, I think this is just the Battle of Quito Canavale. It would be Operation Modular uh, if we were playing, for instance, uh, Graviteam Tactics Maya's Front. So I'm going straight in with the South African campaign here. Uh, obviously, wish us the best of luck. And let's see just how we perform. We are starting at the very beginning at this point. So I'm just going to take a look here at the actual campaign map. And we want to start pushing forward with our South African armor units. So let's do that. We've also got the assistance of Unita here to the north. And of course, Unita is going to be quite useful uh, in this battle, ultimately. Uh, they're basically trying to assist in defeating the MPLA. So let's get over there just on the border at this moment. We'll probably also try and send some of our infantry units into the jungles here uh, to try and get behind this, the uh, actual MPLA lines. All right, I'll take Mulan, put him there. Now, from what I can tell, we don't actually control any of the orange units. These are Unita units, but we might actually have the chance to fight alongside them at some point uh, or even, even maybe control them during the battle uh, dur at some point during this fight. So for now, I'm just kind of putting my guys on the border there, as you can see, of MPLA territory. We don't know what we're facing yet, and let's end the turn. <clears throat> Looks like we already have some contact, and it's going to be attacking one of our mechanized divisions. So let's head in there and uh, try to stop this assault. How is everybody doing? Some crazy stuff in the news today with the Haitian president getting assassinated. I mean, that is absolutely insane. I know Haiti is not the most stable country in the world, but that's just crazy news. It really is. 2021 is a strange year. Maybe 2022 will be just as weird. All right, folks, it looks like this is going to be a night assault. Uh, or an early morning assault, it looks like. So let me just take a look here at how I actually want to set this battle up. We don't really have much um, in terms of these rattle, uh, you know, vehicles. The rattles are pretty good against infantry and decent against other enemy armored vehicles, but it really depends on us seeing them first. Now, obviously, we are the ones that need to assault here, but I'm going to bring these infantry units with us. So let's grab that group there and grab this group, put it behind those rattles over here. Well, maybe we can't control this group. Okay, so we'll just make this the main assault, and we'll make this like a, an additional mechanized assault from the north. Something like that. And let's get started. All right, so first things first, Chiumbe 1 is definitely the location we're going for. Let's go ahead. We're just going to do a basic attack over here. We're going to be a little different with Kubango 2. I just want my guys to use the hunt maneuver to actually look for enemy troops. All right. Wish us luck, boys. It begins. Nothing like an early morning assault to get everybody woken up and going here. Now, we don't see much now, but once the tracers start flying, you guys will be seeing quite a bit. Actually, I'm not sure what the visibility is like for people watching. I can see pretty well here. I want to see if there's any way we can increase brightness. Um, but I don't think there is. This is kind of the way it's supposed to be, like a real battlefield here. Hey, Stin, Pieter, how you doing, guys? Osman Games, will there be a VOD out later? <clears throat> um, what's a VOD? <laughs> uh, I think for sure the video will upload later, so you can watch that. Where am I from? Well, currently, um, I'm in Portugal, but I'm originally from the United States. Let's take a look here and see how that's progressing on the map. Still no contact with MPLA. My biggest concern is that they have tanks in their defensive capabilities. That's going to make things quite difficult for us. 
There we go. That group is there. And with that entire hunt maneuver, we haven't spotted a single enemy. So I'm going to continue that hunt maneuver over here. <clears throat> All right, you can see that push is already infantry in front with the vehicles in the back. In fact, we probably should have just taken this unit and brought it along with these guys. There we go, enemy contact. Let's see what we've got here. Let's hope it's not armor. Holy hell. Yeah, we got some serious enemy contact there to the left. Look at that. They already hit Saber. Looks like our uh, South African infantry are popping out at this point and returning fire. So this is uh, Operation um, Hooper, is the campaign that this is. Minjing Mabutu, I like that. <laughs> Definitely the kind of game he would look for, and unfortunately, three of our vehicles lost there. That's a serious loss, of course. Our infantry are fighting it out. If we want, we could send these guys to go and relieve them, but I'm not even sure that's a good idea. I think we just need to continue towards Jumbe. Excellent MPLA ambush there. It is indeed. It's an Operation Star, the older of the two games. And that's actually why I picked Operation Star. It has a much larger campaign uh, where the South Africans are, are involved quite a bit more. Um, if you get the Graviteam Tactics Maya's front one, it it does seem like it's just not as, uh, it's not as large, really. In fact, we could break off this group. Let's grab them, and we're going to try and assault the enemy here. Hopefully, we can get there in time, but as you can see, the MPLA have tanks. Don't think that we have the, the tech advantage here, because we don't. Um, we don't even have tanks on the field at this moment, so we're just going to keep pushing forward, hoping for the best. How you doing, Floxa and Mike? Good to see you guys. Do rattles have ATGMs? I wonder if somebody in the chat could answer that. I think they do. Um, I think they have anti-tank capabilities, or at least the infantry running with them do. But I'm, I could be wrong on that. And as you can see, we've already actually dismounted these units. Uh, so we've got an entire infantry group moving towards this position. This could actually work out pretty well for us. Is this game like Arma 2? Um, in what way? Not really. I mean, it's not an FPS. It's uh, purely a strategy game. <laughs> oh, we've got some enemy contact here. Let's go ahead and get back to uh, standard speed. But look at this, close combat. We're coming up across an MPLA trench. And our infantry have actually located it first. Light them up, boys. They are all in there, guys. They are all in that trench. We've also got an APC over here. Man, and talk about a battle. not Shadow RC. Push, boys, push. Oh my goodness, look at this. Burning vehicle, burning enemy vehicle. We actually destroyed it. Look at that, man. So I think... I'm not sure if it's got ATGMs, but it looks like the rattles can definitely pierce through um, light enemy vehicle to medium vehicle armor. Like a hot knife through butter. Oh, Pieter says yes. Thank you, Pieter. There is an ATGM version of the rattle that was introduced during this period. Nice. We need them. We need the ATGM rattles because they've got tanks.
Let's get over here to the rattle. How's he doing? Just stay put, and Becky. Don't, don't move. You can actually have him reverse a bit. Oh, cheers. Cheers, man. Thank you for the heads up. I really appreciate it when people give me heads up for stuff like that. I really, really do. Like, if I'm, if you can't hear me, then tell me. This should be a lot better. Hold up. Unfortunately, getting a sound perfect on Gravity Team Tactics can be a little complex, but I think we're good now. And just let me know um, if anything changes. And it looks like we also took some prisoners, guys, over here. We've just been hammering away at this particular trench location, and they've just decided to give up. Not sure if you guys can see that in the darkness. The guy's got his hand up right there. He doesn't want to fight anymore. So let's push. Of course, this particular battlefield is extremely crazy. We are in a jungle, essentially, so we're going to be hit from multiple locations here. I mean, for all we know, the enemy tanks could be behind us, but I'm pretty sure they're actually in the north over here. Mabinja, come on, help us out. These are some of our Unita allies. Looks like we just took a shot over here at one of their vehicles. Let's have a look at it. I want to make sure the rattle is aware of it, because that thing is firing. That is... Not a tank, but it's a proper vehicle there. Kasrila, let's focus right there. Try that again. Nope, we don't have visuals on it. We're going to have to try to get Kasrils over there. Let's just go ahead and... Oh, wait a minute. It's currently stopped. It could just be he's suppressed at the moment. We really need to start putting uh, pressure on that enemy bunker location because they're hitting us with a lot of shots from over there. Might actually try to turn Kasriels this way. But again, he is having some issue with his vehicle. It could be damaged. It could also just be, as you can see right here, the actual morale. They're panicking at the moment. We need to change that and put some fire down this way. All right, let's grab... Look at this massive group. So we're going to take this group, and we're going to try to locate the enemy over here. In fact, we'll do a straight-up assault... Don't forget to smash that like, folks. It does help big time. Somebody uh, disliked our video. I don't. It's not typical for us, but thanks, I guess. Like, right when we started. I mean, it's, it's cool when people do it when we, it's actually uploaded, but for God's sake, give me a chance. All right, here we go. Oh, nasty hit there. I'm not sure if that was just a, a shot from the tank or if the enemy actually has access to artillery. I don't think they do this early on. But let's hope that this spearhead here can actually make a difference. And actually, it looks like Manushu is already firing at the enemy over here. What we really want to do, though, is pop the ATGM back there. We certainly can't wait for the morning light to get up here because the enemy has tanks. They'll be able to spot us quite easily. So the jungle and the night is actually assisting in our advance. Oh, Fluxa. During Operation Modular, one Rotel commander directed a stream of 20 millimeter APC rounds at an Angolan T-855 at close range, which apparently penetrated a vulnerable margin in its armor and caused a catastrophic kill after igniting the onboard ammunition. Jeez, man. I always wonder that with those like massive ammo cache explosions, uh, if the crew is even aware of what's happening, I'm, I'm thinking like the only benefit in a situation like that is you don't even feel it. You know, it's just instant vaporization. 
And by the way, Twitch is beating YouTube right now. We've got six viewers on Twitch and four on YouTube. Well done, guys. <laughs> well done. I think that's the first time Twitch has got the hands up, uh, the heads up here. Slight advantage. Well done, guys. Oh, look at that. He's actually outside of the vehicle, firing the weapon. Man, what a brave uh, gunner here on Kasrils. I still have hope we can win this battle. Um, but keep in mind, we don't have armor anymore, really. Got De Veta, I think, is the last bit of armor we have. Kasrils is pretty much suppressed. Not destroyed, though. So we're going to push over and try to get to Opotamius. Makes me think of Optimus Prime for some, some reason. All right, I'd like to see that burning enemy vehicle at least. You will not be coming back to the fight, but we also kind of stand um, stand a risk here of losing way too many men. I'm still going to push it, but if those tanks show up, I am out of here. I'm off this battlefield. They're all the way over here, though. Unless they've decided to come through the jungle to us, uh, I think we'll be okay. And actually, the morning sun is starting to appear. This is not necessarily good for us. I want to make that attack before that's all the way up. Peter, Pietro says the, those H.E. Oh, sorry, you've already, uh, already read that. Looking at two different chats here, folks. It can be a little, uh, a little complicated sometimes. Tank, tank, over here. Almost certain it's a tank. May okay, well, actually, just an armored vehicle, but could be a problem. Want to wipe him out quickly. Deveta, it's all up to you. Oh, YouTube's beating Twitch now. We got nine viewers on YouTube. <laughs> I think we got four on Twitch still. Yeah, YouTube's winning. I knew my YouTubers would come through eventually, man. Here we go. Oh, that is a direct hit. That is a direct hit, guys. Look at that smoke. I think we hit him right in the side. Looks like he's still operational, but that was right in the side of the vehicle there. We, sh we may have killed some guys inside the actual vehicle. I'm almost certain we did. He's gonna order Deveta to attack here. Taffy O'Keefe, how you doing, buddy? Love the names you guys have. Get him, get him. Come on, Deveta. No! He wasn't focused on the actual target, and as a result, we just got vaporized by the enemy. Uh, we did capture some prisoner prisoners, prisoners uh, incredibly here, but that's going to be the end of the battle. Can't continue the combat, um, and likely is going to be a retreat on our end. Let's take a look here at Twitch. Petrus! Yeah, nice. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, um, so Petrus just mentioned something, and that's one reason to watch us on... In fact, look, guys, I know a lot of you guys don't like Twitch, but for the love of God, right now, go to the Twitch channel, my Twitch channel, and look at the difference in quality, in video quality. YouTube is giving us this, like, piss-poor video quality on streams. Um, Twitch gives us almost perfect video quality on streams. I would say that's one huge benefit. I didn't even I didn't even know that, honestly, Petrus. Um, but I see it now that I'm looking like, you know, between the two. Like it's really dark here on YouTube and really light on Twitch. Man. That's weird. I don't know what's going on there. All right, folks, that's the first battle here of uh Kito Kanavale. We got a lot to go. Let's just go ahead and proceed into the next one, a total defeat. No way around that. If we look here at the casualties, the only benefit might be um, actual captured prisoners. But besides that, really not much. So let's go back to the operation. Let's do this. And, all right. End the turn. 
at this point, there's a few different things we could do. And I'm gonna, actually going to let both of you guys, uh, or both streams, kind of help me make an operational decision here. Now, to the north, I just want to make clear, we do not control these guys to the north or the south. These are UNITA troops. We do, however, control these mechanized units over here. Do you guys think that we should go on the offensive here, um, or should we further strengthen our position and maybe just wait until next turn? So with these rear APC units, for instance, I'm going to push them up to form a defense. But with this group over here, uh, Gildanius, Warner, Zufalkar, you guys think we should just go ahead and attack? Keep in mind, for those of you that are new to Graviteam Tactics, when you see this uh, symbol here, uh, this particular, I, I wouldn't really call it a NATO counter, but this military symbol means that it's an entrenched position. So they're going to be heavily entrenched here, but, you know, we've got vehicles for a reason. I can also start moving up with our infantry here in the southern jungles. So let's do that. Let's push these guys up here, get their commanders behind them. And we could even push and try to assist our UNITA allies here. Um, but I think it's better to assist them on this front. Let's take a look. Flux is saying if those vehicles behind are tanks, I would wait for them to join the attack. I think Flux has a point here. I, I really do. Um, because if we attack with our APCs and don't have those tanks with us, we could run across enemy tanks and then we're completely lost. So I agree. We are going to play it really safe this turn. Just end it. And actually, we have a helicopter over here at the Almeida. Um, it's a supply platoon. Don't get excited, but I do want to bring it. Yes, RPGs are going to be a pain to attack against. Absolutely. And since we're in a more modern war, RPGs are absolutely an issue. Oh, look at that. Twitch is winning now. He got six on Twitch. <laughs> nice, guys. Very nice. All right. Um, and if you guys went to Twitch, by the way, and you did see a difference, actually let people here know, because I wasn't even aware of that, but clearly there is a quality difference. Kind of makes sense because Twitch's focus is gaming, um, whereas YouTube is more just everything. So we're going to be assisting Unita here, guys. Um, and I'm actually going to try and do a defense. In fact, we have our own defense to contend with. Wow, they are attacking all across. So MPLA, well, they essentially did um, sort of the, the African communist version of the Tet Offensive here. They have attacked all over. So the north, the east, and the south into our Unita lines. And you can see over here, they're attacking with Mentoras. Uh, this commander is a tank commander. It's going to be a problem. So here we go. We're going to be defending. Let's hope we do well, folks. All right. Beautiful daytime position here. So let's see where the enemy is supposed to attack. They're supposed to attack from over here. High Command is suggesting we do a counterattack. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not going to be able to use the map for this one. Well, I'm going to use the map, but we're going to actually have to get down to ground level to set these guys up. So let's just make sure we're looking the right way. Yeah. Something like this. This. I'm going to try and set these guys up into actual wooded or bushy positions. So right now I'm just kind of pulling them into this area. Now they could attack us at Allo too. But I'm going to imagine that they're attacking us over here. And I'm going to commit to that. Put those APCs right up front. Let's just take a look here. All right, so when possible, we want to get these guys into cover. So something like this. Kind of turn this into a kill zone. Yeah, baby. I mean, we'll still keep a few of them out here, you know, just to just to draw enemy attention. But where where it's possible, um, we're going to just get them into a better position. Meyer over here. And all of these guys over here. Sufakar. The rest of his buddies as well. All right, not too bad. I think waiting was the right choice. Um, now the question is going to be, how are they going to attack here? Are we going to be able to hold off this attack? Or do we have the enemy outmatched? It's down and up to the rattles, folks. Here we go. 
Is it rattles or rattles? I wonder if I'm even saying it properly. Oh no, and we've got a hell of a lot of fog here, guys. This is going to help the enemy a bit, um, I think almost for sure. Oh, somebody, sorry about that. Somebody suggested a poll, B Tracker. Uh, apologies, B Tracker. We'll do that um, another time. I didn't see that. Um, Flux is asking if Graviton Tactics runs well on low-end PCs. I'm not sure. I would guess that Graviton Tactics Operation Star, what we're playing here, runs pretty well. Um, but if anybody here has, like, a low-to-mid NPC and plays the game, I would, I, I, would, I would be curious to see what you have to say about it. All right, I like this setup. We're just waiting for the enemy to approach. The other thing is we can play music on Twitch. We could have, we would be playing like some uh, some general Mobutu music at this moment, or maybe some South African music. Uh, but unfortunately, with YouTube, that's not an option. They're quick with the copyright stick, folks. They really are. Where are you? Where are you, enemies? <clears throat> We'll fast forward here in a second, but I'm kind of enjoying just waiting for the inevitable enemy attack. What's low end nowadays? Asks Mike Miss. Yeah, that's a good question. What is low end nowadays? Good question. Probably will eventually. If we if we end up streaming this for a while, I will eventually switch. Uh, to Twitch just so that we can listen to some good old Afrikaans music, uh, maybe some other stuff, some MPLA ballads, whatever, whatever uh, floats your boat, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put it on. And don't forget, guys, those, those of you watching us on Twitch, uh, if you follow us, people in the YouTube stream are also going to see your follow. So it's a good way to uh, let them know <laughs> what's going on. All right, we need to go ahead, turn our focus, actually. I'm not getting the focus button here. I'm just getting the selection button. There we go. That works. Yep, he's not getting past Von Rebeck. And of course, they've got their infantry out. They are lighting this mother up. Look at that, man. Yes, she is done. She is done. Now, we did hit it with a few ATGM rockets after the fact, but this guy actually was just heavily suppressed gonna abandon that vehicle you can absolutely in this game you can make an armored vehicle abandon if you light it up with enough machine guns if you just hit it with so many machine guns that the driver doesn't know what the hell is going on you can absolutely get them to abandon the vehicle get them boys look at that we've got an almost perfect visual of the advancing enemy if they break that line we are gonna spot them instantly Let's take a look over here. Another armored vehicle and another kill. Our boys are doing a tremendous job, guys. Just tremendous. Not without losses, mind you. I want this guy to straighten out a bit. Same with this guy. They're kind of trying to help with the fight over there to the east, but uh, I need them looking over here. Otherwise, they're going to be prime target for enemy um, RPGs. So far, they're not even in RPG range. Look at this. Look at the South Africans exiting the vehicles here. Getting ready to get to the fight on the ground. I love it. Wow, eight viewers. <laughs> no name jellyfish. What's up, man? Is this game before Maya's Front? Yes, it is. It is. Um, it's um, it's actually also known as Achtung Panzer for our German subscribers. I'm not sure we have many. <laughs> Which I believe would be Caution Panzer would be the, the actual translation there. So far, guys, this is held like, like a steel beam. They have not been able to break us at all. Even with all of this fog, 
The jungle, we have been crushing them. Just look at this return fire. It's obscene. Not since the Gulf War do you get live combat footage like this, my friends. I think we should advance with Motsap, although I always think we should advance. Why advance when we're already doing quite well? So you know what? I'll keep things as they are. The only exception being with Viloin, I am going to hunt forward here. Look at that gunner on the back, man. Unbelievable. I love this vehicle. Wait, you thought what was the book now? <laughs> oh, actual answer. <laughs> it might be, it might be. If anybody wants to see that rattle in action, we'll get a nice side view of this baby. This one, by the way, I believe does have the AP shells. What I've never understood, right, about the rattle is that ballistics glass. I mean, it's awesome, but something has to be able to pierce through that, right? Like certain bullets. There we go. Look at that thing firing. Just looking for targets at this point. Fluxus says, I think ballistic glass is a few millimeter thick, so it can stop up to 50 cal. And Mike missed the glass is more bulletproof than vehicle itself. Really? Oh, okay. I see what you mean. So that's not a cause for concern, in other words, to have glass like that. Like, it always it initially seemed to me like a bad vehicle design. Thank you. All right, here we go. Oh man, look at that infantry line, guys. Look at that infantry line. Let's make sure they are all targeted here. Looks like this over here may be enemy crew, but that is absolutely MPLA infantry advancing on us. Now I wanna make it very clear. These could also be Cuban infantry units. They aren't in this particular situation, but for those of you that are not aware in this fight, uh, the Cubans had a sort of, um, I guess you could call it a Marxist crusade where they would actually offer, um, I, there's an actual term for this, mutual aid uh, to Angola. They gave them vehicles, they gave them manpower, uh, all sorts of things, as, as well as like really good training. So the MPLA troops we're fighting are really well-trained troops. Um, it's a professional army, you know, 100%. Um, the UNITA guys that are on our side are kind of not as professional, really. Um, but it's a fascinating conflict. I highly recommend anybody that doesn't know about it to look into it. It's, it's pretty cool. In fact, over on the Discord, uh, pretty soon I want to go ahead and stream a documentary um, specifically on the the, uh, the Bush War, which would be quite quite fun to watch with you guys. Oh, nice. Minjing Mabuto says, the vehicles you're facing are using 14.5 millimeter machine guns. Yeah, so that's not piercing anything. Well, it's not piercing um, the glass, at least. I just took a guess on that term as well, ballistics glass. I guess, I, I guess it's correct. So another option here to be a little more aggressive is to take these guys in the middle, rush up the road, and maybe try to hit the enemy from the flank here. But I really worry about that jungle. I mean, the first battle we had, the MPLA ambushed us like crazy. So I'm not going to take the risk. Maybe just with a couple units, but I would basically be sacrificing these guys. Sorry, Butisi. Let's just have him hunt. We're not going to go all the way over there. I just want to hunt into the jungle because I don't want the enemy sneaking up on us. There we go. Good luck, boys. Best of luck to you. Got a vehicle lost. That's the first one. And it's actually over here at the enemy infantry line. 
So we got to keep our focus over here. In fact, let's have Viloin look over that way. Hey, what's up, man? Asterisk, asterisk. How you doing, buddy? Uh, is it the war in Namibia? No. Uh, this is the Angolan border war. Let's see. Oh, it is. 14.5 is enough to pop through the window, he says. Damn. Um, Mike Miss says 14.5 will annihilate the rattle. Well, I think uh, I think what he's referring to is probably like the um, the enemy tanks. Is it the tanks or the enemy AT guns? One of those vehicles evidently can, can pierce through our rattle pretty easily. And as evidence, you know, one of our guys took a nasty hit there. Oh, my goodness. Burning up, man. Oof. Does not look good. Tired as hell. Sorry to hear that, my friend. I haven't had the uh, the best day myself. I was walking with my dog outside, and unfortunately, one of the, the negative aspects of living in um, a southern European country is there's a lot of, uh, I guess you could call it like cobblestone streets and sidewalks. And I stepped right into a pothole, twisted my ankle, something fierce. So I figured, why don't I stream Gravitine today uh, for both Twitch and YouTube? <laughs> I think had I not twisted my ankle so badly, I wouldn't even bother streaming this today. I would have just made a video. Here we go. Motsep and De Blanche. I love that name. That is an Afrikaans name. De Blanche. Really doing a stellar job here. The enemy's gonna have to fall back eventually. In fact, we'll take a look here at their casualties. We're not gonna see all of them because of the fog of war, but we should be able to get a visual on m many MPLA casualties. Look at this. I mean, this is not good. Oh, the first vehicle we destroyed had the 14.5, says uh, Minjing Mabuto. Which is still the current best name in either stream. <laughs> Minjing Mabuto. Oh, man. So, every single gray dot you see out there is an enemy casualty. Uh, a little concerned as where they're approaching over there from Allo 2, and that's one of our other locations. I'm going to have to go and try to do something about that. Um, we'll hunt in that direction with Von Reba. And we might actually send additional units because I don't want them taking that location. There's another vehicle lost, and I bet it's one of the guys we sent on the attack run. Yep, look at that, folks. Look at that. Actually, actually, oh, never, never mind. Somebody clip that on Twitch. We can clip that clip that he didn't get destroyed. He just he's just a bad driver and he's not familiar with the terrain. Come on, man. We don't need that. It's get. Come on. No name jellyfish says I haven't run in four weeks. Ouch. Happened to me not long ago when I went for a run says no name jellyfish. Yeah, man, it's it sucks. It's not fun. Um, and the problem is, like, I've broken this ankle three times already. You know, twice when I was a kid playing soccer, and uh, once uh, when I was an adult, <laughs> um, being silly and uh, basically uh, riding. It, it wasn't a motor scooter, but like you know, one of those like um, electric scooters. Uh, and I wasn't really familiar with it, and uh, you know, driving it down a sidewalk fell off and broke my ankle terribly so now it's really really weak it's just a weak ankle although no doctor has ever like suggested surgery or anything like that i don't know if i have to like ask for that come on boys yeah that's right we're not we're not letting them take this point keep pushing and another enemy vehicle knocked out right there this is the one with the 14 5 yeah look at that it's a mean gun man now, just at the edge of the the plains here, I'm seeing them at that border of trees. Look at that. Look at that. South African attack force here. Those are FN fouls, aren't they? I believe it's an FN foul. Or is it a Galil? get closer there so you guys can tell us. 
such a nice gun, man. The Portuguese used the, um, the same guns in their colonial wars. All right, let's turn this way. We've got way too much enemy action that way. I want Van Riebeck to face. I'll let Viloin stay in this uh, position just in case the enemy has armor over here that we're not seeing. Get him, Rebeck. Look at that. He's on the MG. How many wars does this game simulate? A lot of them, but it, I wish it simulated more. I would say probably like the most obscure war it simulates is Sovio Soviet. Let me say this correctly. Um, um, Sino-Soviet border conflicts, which is basically the border conflicts between um, Maoist China and the Soviet Union. And up until playing this game, I had no idea those were even a thing. But since the terrain between the two countries is so massive and so remote, um, there are gunfights and stuff, or at least there were in the 60s and 70s um, between the two sides. You know, people actually got killed. Still under fire here, but still no lost vehicles yet. Well, at least not in the last few minutes. Welcome, everybody. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for stopping in. Um, come on, man. <laughs> Thank you for clipping that, Mike. Um, thanks for stopping in, folks. We're streaming this on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, so a special thank you to both of you guys, or both of the groups here. I think in total, we've got 17 people, so that's pretty cool. We've got uh, 7 on Twitch and 10 on YouTube. We did discover something somewhat unfortunate about YouTube live streams, and that is that the quality is not as good as the Twitch live streams. Uh, this has to be like 780, maybe? Um... I don't even know if it's a it's a question of resolution like that, but without a doubt, the Twitch stream looks better. I'm not gonna lie. Look at that! Explosive rounds from Von Rebeck, and the enemy is asking for a ceasefire. MPLA wants a ceasefire. No thank you. Let's push, guys. We're not finished here. There's also not much modding for this game, which is unfortunate, because, you know, you can mod so many different conflicts with this game, and it just doesn't really exist. There's, like, a graphics mod. That's about it. See an enemy AT gun back there. You guys might not see it, but I got a glimpse of it. So I got to send Viloin this way. Come on, Von Rebic. These guys deserve a medal after this fight. Oh, look at those explosive rounds, guys. Oh, boy. They can just smoke. Enemy still wants that ceasefire. I'm, I mean, why give them a ceasefire when we're absolutely crushing them here? You know, I don't see the point. Even if we lose these vehicles, there's so many of them left to fight. No, let's force them to flee. We're overextending a little bit here, but just look at that shot. Like, if Van Rebeck can just get his shots on target... In fact, I'm going to back him up just a bit here. Back up, Van Rebeck. Keep looking that way, though. Don't stop looking that way. Oh! He's doing everything he can here. Pop and smoke. Unfortunately, if you look over here, six of the men are killed or are heavily wounded, but I'm guessing that is not the vehicle crew. That is devastating. Yeah, asterisk, asterisk. A lot of people have um, shared the same frustration about Graviton Tactics. I, I've had a lot of people ask me for um, like a tutorial. I do have one up on the channel, but, um, you know, it's, uh, oh, fuck, sorry about that. Thank you, Flux. Uh, we need to get some, we need to make a moderator here in the, uh, in the Twitch channel. Sorry about that, man. If anybody wants to moderate in the Twitch channel, let us know, and, uh, we'll definitely consider it. Yeah, we got rid of him. Kauslan, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. All right, let's get back to the combat. We had a little advertiser on Twitch. That's one of the negatives of Twitch is their uh, 
you get these like guys trying to sell you followers and it's like look come on i mean if um if i wanted to buy followers it's, it's not going to generate any like additional views for me you know if you buy fo fake followers you're not going to be any better off i can assure you of that who clicks that man like how do they even get sales all right keep going keep going von rebeck still crushing it over here and currently, Twitch is beating YouTube with, with viewers. I'm very, very proud of you guys. You're making me happy. The only thing that can make me happier is a few follows and uh, maybe uh, maybe an Owen Wilson uh, voice fit. <laughs> Does somebody want to play the Owen Wilson sound alert? One of the many free sound alerts we have on our Twitch channel. Oh. Wow. There you go. Thanks, buddy. Who, who did it? Was it Fat Cat? It had to be. <laughs> maybe it was Mike. Thanks, guys. Owen Wilson is a is a, a big fan of the Agrippa Maxenius uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if you guys knew that. That's a fact. No, no need to follow up on that. I wouldn't recommend like emailing his PR department or anything like that. Just trust me. I give you my word. Whatever that's worth. Van Rebeck. And how are they still fighting? Well, unfortunately, we do have another vehicle lost over here. Still doing fine, but the enemy is not retreating. And it, again, I, I don't want to retreat myself, or I don't even want to accept a ceasefire when we have the clear advantage here. We want to make the MPLA hurt for the rest of this campaign, essentially. Turn that way, Von Riebeck. I feel like one thing, um, this is going to be totally random, but it does apply to strategy. One thing that I think every game, aside from Graviteam Tactics, does really poorly is like, as an example, okay, you've got an AT gun crew. And in like every strategy game, the AT gun crew is only effective against enemy armor. Well, the way it works in like Graviteam Tactics is the AT gun crew also has AP rounds. Like they've got armor piercing and anti-personnel rounds. And that's the way it is in real life. I mean, if you're an AT gun crew and you've got like infantry charging you, it's not like the 1800s. You don't just leave your gun behind, you know what I mean? Like you you, you do something about it. Um, You get flechette rounds or something like that. And this game simulates that really well. So when you're having your AT guns charged, you'll see them firing these explosive rounds into enemy um, infantry columns. It's just freaking beautiful. What else can I say? But I think it's something that's um, really poorly shown in these games. And actually, I'm going to recommend a book for you guys on both channels. I've recommended it before. He says, um, Kaus Lanyer says, Got Tank Warfare when it was on sale today. Have not tried it out yet at all yet. I played OS a little bit in the past. Nice. Um, let's see here. So it's called In Deadly Combat. Um, I highly recommend this book. It's, uh, it's a, from a German on the Eastern Front, and he's part of an AT gun crew. So the name of the book is In Deadly Combat, a German soldier's memoir of the Eastern Front by Gottlob Herbert Biedermann. And I'm actually going to see if I can't drop a link here for you guys. Um, I rarely, rarely recommend books. But this is one of those books that I would say everybody should get. It's freaking amazing. How is resupply and ammo handled? So resupply and ammo is handled on the campaign map. Um, we'll take a look at that at the end of this battle. And there you go, guys. Um, and the name of the author, I think you'll find it if you, if you search. But it's Gottlieb Herbert Bietermann. And, I mean, it's such a great um how can i explain it like you know even in like infantry charges he explains like how an at gun crew reacts um how they move the at gun etc so just a really cool book I, I highly recommend that one all right let's go they're still not giving up well we can't accuse the mpla of being cowards because they just threw everything at us maybe not strategically sound because look at what we've done to their infantry but Good for us. What's that saying? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. 
Here we go, boys. Yeah, I'm not driving any of our guys into this area. Losing a vehicle just purely to the terrain was quite embarrassing. I'm actually worried about Havengi here. And there we go. Enemy is retreating. That's what we're looking for. Please don't flip over. Please don't flip over. Please don't. We've already lost one of you guys. Yeah. 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 Asterisk, asterisk. Exactly. Um, you can definitely get your infantry annihilated by AT guns in this game. Because they're going to switch to those uh, anti-personnel rounds. And those things just, you know, massive shrapnel bombs, pretty much. Well, I think we can call this a monumental victory. Let's see. A minor victory. <laughs> Graviton Tactics was like, cool your jets. Cool your jets, Agrippa. It's not uh, it's not that good. You're, you're doing all right. Kilania, what's up, buddy? Yeah, I, like I said, so many people have asked for a tutorial, and, and I do have one on the channel. Um... But I guess, like, a more updated one would be beneficial. Um, I might even show you guys here a little bit, frankly. Okay, not so bad. But this time, we're going to be playing as Unita, defending against the MPLA. And uh, we are not going to have access to nearly as much equipment here as Unita. Wish us luck. It's also going to likely be jungle combat or... At the very edge of the jungle. Barely knew what I was doing. It's well, it's one of those games where, like, you're overthinking it a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that tough a game. I swear it isn't. The UI is terrible. It is. But the game itself is not that tough to learn. Like, once you kind of figure things out, um, it's not that bad. The toughest thing in this game is calling in artillery. That's a real pain. And I would still have to watch a tutorial to do it properly, frankly. Which is bad, because we've got an artillery guy right here with Mabinda. Uh, but thankfully, the AI will also call in artillery. So right now, I'm just getting set up here for an MPLA assault. I don't expect us to be able to hold out against this. Again, the MPLA are absolutely a professional army. You know, these guys know what they're doing. Um, they've been trained by the Cubans. I like this location. I'm just hoping they have visibility because this is actually a nice location for an AT gun to hide. Uh, maybe something like this. Eh. I really hope that works. You should be able to see through the tall grass. So let's just set these guns properly. Some of them will have to be kind of out in the open. Um, so that we can spot the enemy. So we'll put this one right there, Naubeb. You can also see the names kind of changing, because these, of course, are Angolan troops. You've got some Portuguese names and some traditional African names as well. Uh, let's put Mbinda a little closer to the combat, like over there. Close, but not too close. And with v with vines here, um, we already got somebody over there. Let's do like this. I also want to have an infantry unit over here to defend these AT guns, and Makaba is going to have to take over that task. I will even bring over Anjush. All right. Hope this is a good start here. All right. How you doing, Tommy? Good to see you, man. We're having a little, uh, I guess you could call it a contest today to see who can uh, who can beat who in terms of viewers. Uh, right now, we've got 10 on Twitch. Crazy. Uh, and we've got 9 on YouTube. Man, split right down the middle. To tell you something, as a content creator, that's not, uh, that's not what I would like to see. <laughs> I guess it's good either way. Here we go. But it looks like 50-50. Is it possible it's like the young crowd and the old crowd? I, I wonder. I wonder. All right, folks. We're just waiting for the enemy to attack. Again, I love this position for the AT gun. 
but I'm just wondering if they're going to be able to see through here. I mean, it, I think they should be able to. And the reason being, if an enemy tank approaches, he's not going to be able to spot this thing at all. Mm -hmm. Another thing is we are not dug in. We're not in an entrenched position like we were in other battles. So I'm going to take a Gonga here. And actually, I'm just going to recon into the woods. Could have actually done a covert move, but recon will work. We're going to take Makaba, recon into the woods. Actually, I'll hunt into the woods. And this just means if they spot any enemies, they'll immediately open up. Try to take them out. But hopefully this will be like the previous battle and the enemy will just throw themselves at us and get absolutely wrecked. Although I don't expect that to be the case because we don't have armor for this battle. Comando posição. Taking position. I love the Portuguese in this game. We're going to recon with these units as well. In fact, we could take the whole Silva Porto group over here. Let's just take these guys and kind of have them hang out over here in this. What is this? Maybe a... I wouldn't know what kind of plant this is. Maybe even a coffee field. Recon over here. If there were little red berries on it, that would look like a coffee plant. So far, not a single whisper from the MPLA. All we hear are roosters growing. <laughs> Benrack43, Twitch or YouTube, why not both? Exactly. I like that. I like the, the approach that... Well, what's making me happy is, like, we sort of were struggling with Twitch quite a bit initially to get views. Um, and then I went back to YouTube to start streaming, and the guys on YouTube were so kind. You know, I think we, we actually had for the close combat stream, or not the close combat stream, the... Um, no, it is close combat, not combat mission. Uh, we had like 38 or 37 concurrent viewers, which was awesome. And that made me go, made, that made me decide that like, you know, maybe I should give Twitch another chance and just approach it a bit differently. So what we've done with Twitch uh, is basically, you know, we try to play games that we think that the YouTube crowd will also like. We've gotten away from like just playing action stuff. We do occasionally, but we played GeoGuessr, which is a geography game. Uh, we played Anno 1800. So that's kind of the approach I'm taking there, and it seems to be working pretty well. So I just want to thank everybody on both YouTube and Twitch uh, for being so awesome with, with the views. And let's just hope we can keep it going. By the way, we got an enemy a AT, uh, not an ATGM, an enemy uh, APC coming this way. And I don't think we've got anything to deal with it. So best of luck. Go, yeah. So they're moving over here. And remember, when I started the map setup, I had said they could attack us over here, but I don't think they will. Big mistake. Let's take Shada. Oh, our guys are definitely targeting them. Yeah, that's a cause for concern. Oh, you're actually watching both, says Fenrock. <laughs> hey, that's great. If, if, if everybody could watch both and follow both, that would be the ideal, uh, the ideal thing for me. That's for sure. Oh my goodness, look at all of those APCs. Man, these guys better have an ATGM. Let's see if anybody's got an RPG. Holy hell. I don't see any RPGs. Man, look at that. So many armored vehicles and infantry. And I warned you, we're dealing with a professional army here. And UNITA are, yeah, basically, UNITA forces are really just, uh, I don't want to call them militia forces, but really more guerrilla-style forces. So what we can do here is at least turn our AT guns in that direction, although we're, it's unlikely we're going to be able to spot any of them here. Here we go. Mantorage. Let's turn them this way. I just like niche games. That's kind of the approach we take on Twitch, because... The truth is, if you play AAA stuff, um, it's close to impossible to get anybody to follow you. You know, there's going to be people that are playing AAA stuff with thousands of viewers. So on Twitch, I follow the same sort of routine of at least playing a game that's not necessarily well-known, you know? Man, Mantoraj, I really wish I had put you in a different location. So the only thing left to do, we'll keep this guy here, Santush, but is to try to escape, really, um, with all of these guys. 
And I don't think that's going to be possible. They have to climb this hill. Let's see what they can do against the enemy vehicles. Probably not much. Abre fogo. Let's have a look. Not a single RPG as far as I can tell. Okay, and now they're attacking at the Cervate area. Although I believe we're more prepared here. We've got AT guns. We already killed one of the enemy vehicles there. Look at that. Beautiful. I love when the vehicle is still moving, but there's nobody inside. Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. I'm glad we put Gonga and uh, Goli Veda over here because, of course, they're watching that infantry move forward. The Oliveira as well, taking wonderful shots. Abre fogo. Let's get those anti-personnel rounds. What about over here? Dush Anjush and Makaba. So I'm thinking we let them attack us over here. We damage them as much as possible, and then we move into the city. But this is not one of those fights where we're going to come out on top at all. It's just no way. Let's take a look over there. <laughs> Fenrock says, it's not the most ideal setup, but uh, he gets his sound through YouTube and the visuals through Twitch. <laughs> oh, man. Ben Rock says, I have a soft spot for the Kaspa and its Rhodesian cousin, the Leopard Security Vehicle. The Kaspiers. I haven't heard about those. Now, what are the ones? Because there's a really weird vehicle in Maya's front, and I hate it. I think it's a Warthog, or uh, it's the it's the African name for a Warthog. Um, and it's like this vehicle that looks like almost like an open truck with a machine gun in the front and a machine gun in the back. It's just a very, like, basic technical, basic, you know, it's a, it, it's essentially a technical. Um, just with one gun in the back and one gun in the front. I'm pretty sure it's a Warthog or something like that. So we're trying to look at that, man. We're trying to lure them over here. If we can lure them into our AT guns, we can get some really good shots. But I don't think they're falling for that. I highly doubt it. Now, we could try to call in artillery. But this will show you guys just how tough it is to call in Artie in this game. See, so boom, a binga. Gotta select it. There's number one Artie. And now we have to select the actual um, commander here, which is Mabinda. And see, even I don't know, because typically in Maya's front, you'll have this pop out screen, which will give you the artillery coordinates. Here we go heavy mortars. All right, we're going to do high explosive. That's going to be area number one. And we're going to do 10 shells per gun. And we're going to call support. Now, you guys will see how this works. It's going to be four minutes before we get that mortar support. But whether or not it's going to be useful against armored vehicles, I don't know. Uh, probably not, actually. Just to be safe, I'm going to call all of our positions over there. But that's more or less how you call in artillery in this game. Um, sadly, no. I wish, I wish they did. Um... Asterisk, Asterisk is asking, does the game have some missions on the Portuguese Colonial War? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any game that I've heard of that has missions on the Portuguese Colonial War. But rest assured that on both sides, there were Portuguese uh, people fighting. In this war, even. See that countdown? Two minutes, 45 seconds. It's coming, boys and girls. Uh, Petra says, The Cuspier is a troop carrier that is a V-shaped hull for mine blast resistance. Ah. Interesting. Interesting. 
232. Really hoping this pays off. And again, you also have to try and, and like, just like in combat mission, you've got to visually see the target. So I don't think that we've got a perfect visual on that target. I think that our commander knows that it's on the other side of the forest here. That much he knows, but aside from that, probably not the best information. Now in this game, um, there's actually a button, it's an F3, that shows like all the radio communications between the units. So these guys, Serpa, could be letting them know where the enemy is. But again, if a unit is like under fire, they're not gonna be providing the best coordinates. They're gonna be panicking. Turn Santosh this way. I believe Santosh is an ATGM. Maybe not. Nope, just a heavy machine gun here. Oh, I want to get this thing firing on them. Vamos, Santosh. They're going to have just a massive force of uh, AT of uh, APCs here. There's no doubt about it. So I'm just turning all of the guns that way, hoping for the best. 56 seconds until bomb strike. Supposed to pop right there. So hopefully we can at least get a tremendous amount of their infantry. And if we get really lucky, then we take out some of their APCs. But don't don't count on it, folks. We'll make sure here for both um, both our Twitch viewers and our YouTube viewers uh, that you know how to get to the other stream here. So here's for Twitch. If you guys want to catch the YouTube stream. And then... I think for YouTube, I actually have to type it in manually. You want to follow us on Twitch, which I would greatly appreciate, and you'll also get a shout out here on uh, this live stream. Uh, then make sure to go to that link. All right, guys, we're waiting on this wonderful strike. Well, I'm hoping it's wonderful. Let's just select that guy one more time. 18 seconds. 14, 12, 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's not going to be instantaneous. Artillery strike. Let's see where it's going to pop. And as you can see, do you see what I'm talking about, folks? <laughs> about artillery in my in uh, gravity team tactics. It's going to fire over here, which is nowhere near where we wanted it to. But um, again, we're not in a position to really get a perfect visual on the target. So that's just kind of the way things go. And that's why, you know, doing a tutorial on the game, which people have asked me to do, um, I would have to do it with a lot of, like, um, you know, not a lot of warnings. You know, stuff like, your artillery might not strike where you ask it to. Um, enemy vehicles may abandon for no reason, because we haven't been firing over here, I don't believe, unless our ET gun got a shot. Here we go, Hendrik. Still not here, but they will approach soon. Now, I could call another strike. And here's what we can do. We're going to pop this strike a little closer. I actually have an idea. Prisoners captured. Hey, it's always a good thing. No. Oh, I see. We can't select that one. So let's select three. We're going to have to wait for this uh, this firing mission to stop. Yeah, there's no way around that. All right, let's just hope that our AT guns perform here. Mantoraj, we need you to look that way. Let's see if Hendrik is already kind of looking that way. Eh, kind of, sort of. 
Here we go. Enemy vehicles. Yeah, they can spot them in the bush there. Look at that. We need the guns. Fire. Yes. Oh, they're, re they're returning fire. They're definitely returning fire. Oh, shit. He's down. Yeah, we got one of the vehicles, two of the vehicles, as a matter of fact. Reload, Hendrick. Reload. That's an enemy capturing the key point. Not what we want to see. Let's just take a look here at the enemy position. I'm also seeing some smoke further down in the jungle. So I think we may have actually destroyed quite a few of their vehicles. There's another one. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Come on, come on, come on. Montourage. I think Hendrick's going to try to get a shot. Of course, we've got a lot of trees in the way. Not exactly an easy shot to make. Let's see if Mantoresh can fire through here. Because, again, this is such a good shot, a spot for an AT gun if he can see out. Pretty well timed. Cheers, cheers. Let's get Naubeb to look this way as well. And again, take some time for, for people to execute orders. Depends on a number of factors. Um, but as you can see there, we, we executed the order. <clears throat> it took them about 20 seconds to actually respond. So you, you do want to keep that in mind in this game. Come on, come on. You can see him now, Bev. He's right there, right in front of you. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, as you can see, he shot a bit low. But look at what that AT gun does uh, to anything it hits. Come on, we need a kill on this vehicle, boys. Light her up. So the enemy initially asked for a ceasefire there. Now they want to continue the battle. We just destroyed that vehicle. Unbelievable shooting there. And yeah, I think they, they're expecting their APCs to, to be able to make it through here. And they might. If they can take out our anti-tank guns, they can absolutely push through. But I think we've got some extremely good shot so far look at those burning vehicles damn man mpla can't get a break <clears throat> i have to say they're kind of in a pretty open location as well not exactly in the greatest location Man, the knowledge about South, South African armored vehicles in uh, the Twitch chat is incredible. I can already tell it because uh, we know we know Pietar is from um, from South Africa, so obviously the information they have is way beyond uh, what I what I know about the conflict or the or the vehicles in it. But it's amazing. I mean, there are some really cool uh, bush fighting vehicles uh, that the the South Africans made. Really, really cool stuff. Innovative, you know what I mean? It's innovative. At least for this kind of combat. How well do you guys think the bush is represented in this game? Like, let's get a visual here, for instance. Like, let's say we're out on ground level and trying to look over and find an enemy over there. Is that kind of what it would be like? I'm guessing there would be even denser shrubs and things like that. It'd be almost impossible to see anything over here. And look at that, guys. MPLA prisoners. 
surrendering to us. That's always a good thing to see in a battle. Keep those hands up. So far, so good. Oh! Hendrix saw something. Not good, not good. He's lost a few of his men already. They may have managed to actually get a shot on us there, yep. So don't ask me why, but Graviton Tactics does count an AT gun as a vehicle as well. I do think it's a little strange. Actually, at this point, we should push the Oliveda up to Gonga. Um, I'm going to make an assault just because we are not in cover at all here. So let's take that jungle or that bush. Got some RPGs as well with this unit. You know, obviously not all of our units are carrying RPGs, but these guys could absolutely take out an APC. So I'm going to push forward and keep taking the fight to the enemy. If you get two victories like that against the MPLA, we're off to a very good start. I love the just burning, uh, the fire burning in the background here. Petrus says, um, the vehicle South Africa have, even to this day, were basically chosen on the conditions of this conflict. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. The, the Warthog, all those different vehicles, they seem to be made for like a bush conflict, exactly. When your military hasn't really been in a large war since Nam, Desert Storm aside, you not, might not be best placed to know armored vehicle designs as pertains to mines, IEDs. Wow. I'm guessing um, South Africans would be very helpful, especially with, with the modern uh, conflicts that a lot of Western nations find themselves embroiled in, uh, you know, because of IEDs and roadside bombs, things like that. It's a big deal, man. I really want to move into uh, Kabarata and take it. But again, always a risk. And considering the enemy still got some APCs there, we're going to hold our position for now. But I think almost for sure that we could storm that area and actually take it. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go get some water here in a second. Come on now. Makaba. Could actually push Makaba a little more to the north here if we want. Um, we'll do that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of covert move up here. Just see if we can't get some flanking attack started. Whatever helps us out, basically. Okay, the Oliveda pushed up just a little bit too far. I think we'll be okay, though. <laughs> um, I'm going to focus fire on that vehicle. There we go. I mean, considering the forces the enemy had at the start of this battle, I think we've done damn well. How many APCs of theirs have we destroyed? One, two, three. There's one over here, four, that's not being represented. But how many did they have? So it's always a useful skill to go ahead and count enemy vehicles as they, as they appear. I'm guessing they've got to have at least eight or nine or even ten more APCs. So battle's nowhere near over. But it might be a good idea for us to actually accept that ceasefire, believe it or not. They might not realize that we don't have any tanks or any armor. 
unfortunately well yes and no um it does have some town battles uh asterisk is asking does the game have urban battles i really wish it did especially since it does eastern front combat so well um but like the best you're gonna get is like a large town in the uh in the eastern front essentially uh and you can fight in the town so, so yes and no kind of but not like a city battle more like a suburban battle how about that like a suburban battle there we go oh look wait a minute look at the helmets oh never mind i thought they were wearing uh, french helmets from world war ii look at how prepared these guys are oh that is a killer that is a killer get him boys oh yeah firing directly at the enemy right here look at all the mpla taking cover i don't think they're fans of this combat whatsoever gotta love the at gun crews in this battle though they've really done an amazing job with mabinda we could try to call in another arty strike um and actually area number three is where we want to call it so let me do it high explosive area number three uh, we're gonna do full ammo load. We're just gonna throw everything at them. And of course, you know how this game works. We might end up getting something really bad happening and uh, it might end up falling on our own guys. I'm hoping that's not the case, but we're basically calling the uh, South African equivalent of Broken Arrow here. Directly on that location. So it should hopefully pop all around this area. If the enemies in the jungle, we'll be able to hit them a few times. Let's just hope this works out in our favor. After the SADF was disbanded and the SA SANDF was formed, a very large quantity of the old soldiers went and fought as contractors on the western side in the insurgency wars. Wow. Learn something new every day, man. That's, that's crazy. Again, they've got all those locations under their control. That's another reason I don't feel like really surrendering or, excuse me, uh, going for a ceasefire here. I want those locations back. And if we accept a ceasefire, then, you know, just by default, they keep the locations they're already on. 255, three minutes until mortar attack or artillery attack. The Oliveda is really close. This might end up being a danger close situation for him and his men. Okay, he's getting pretty far out there. Come on, guys. Get the APC, for God's sake. Hoping the Oliveira or one of the AT gunners can snipe him. Just someone get an RPG. Come on, boys. No, Bib, can you see him? So the way you know if your guys can actually spot the enemy is they'll show up as white if they can see them perfectly. They'll show up as yellow, um, if they can see them, kind of. And if they're blue like this, then our guys can't really see them. They can still make an educated guess, though, and get a kill. But, uh, yeah, not great for us. So we really need that artillery to, uh, to work out in this instance. Good question, though, on the urban battles, asterisk, asterisk. I, I, I often think that's one of the games, next to the UI, it's one of the game's biggest flaws. One thing that really surprised me, Petrus, was, um, you know, like, learning about the conflict in um, the colonial wars in, in uh, Mozambique and Angola. I was always under the impression that, like, it was like a black versus white conflict, which in many cases it was. But um, I actually learned, like, even talking to some guys here in Portugal, some of the guys fought alongside the MPLA, like, you know, actual Portuguese folks uh, that were against colonialism. And then you've got other Portuguese guys that fought alongside the South Africans or alongside UNITA. So, you know, the Portuguese did play a large part in this conflict as well. 
I think any war um, in that particular part of Africa, Angola, etc., of course, you're going to have involvement of multiple nations. I mean, we even have Cubans in this conflict, so that's how far-reaching it becomes. All right, let's see if we're getting that artillery yet. Where is it? 36 seconds. 36 seconds. This better be effective. I will court-martial you faster than you can blink, Mabinga. I swear to God if you don't get this right. 26 seconds. Like this one he should be able to see fairly well. At least, you know, be in the in the region of correct, basically. There we go. And, of course, where is the artillery striking? Right next to us. How does that make sense? I think you guys see what I mean about the artillery in this game. We're going to have to get the hell out of here. Fast move. <coughs> Absolutely awful. So we're going to end up bombing the Samalobo position, even though we called it there. Yeah, that puts people off, I can tell. All right, we've got a hell of a lot of infantry here, though. I feel like we've done a number on their APCs. But until we destroyed this one, I wouldn't feel um, safe charging the town. Let's just see. Maybe somebody's got an RPG tucked in their backpack. That is such a disappointing arty strike, man. Luckily, I think this is on map already, so it's it might not even fire because it's too close. Eh, I take that back. I think I just heard the artillery go off. Nope, that's RPGs. That's our boys trying to hit him with RPGs. We got him. We got him. Guys, look at this. We got another. This is just insane. Let's keep taking him down. I think the, the RPG changed as um, armored combat so much from World War II to more modern battles, more modern wars, I should say. It's just ridiculous. You know, you can hit a tank at a distance like this. Let's see exactly how far this is, by the way. Select Ujanjush. Um, Select distance. So we hit that vehicle at a distance of about 374 meters. Actually... That's not too bad. That's about a third of a kilometer. Um, still, like, that's that's impressive. You know, in World War II, you're not hitting a tank with a Piat or a Panzerfaust at that distance. It's not going to happen. Just look at that, man. Beautiful, beautiful sight. What do you guys think? If someone calls a ceasefire, someone in the chat calls ceasefire on, on either the Twitch or YouTube streams, uh, we'll ceasefire. I like what we're doing, but we do stand to lose a few guys here, for sure. We'll check in about a minute here. That APC is getting close. I don't like that. There we go, boys. There we go. Come on now. Or Makaba, whoever the hell has an RPG, let him have it. That's a smart move by the enemy AI. Look at that. So they basically position their vehicle right here. We're not going to be able to hit them from over here because the other vehicle's in the way, but we got a shot from the front. <laughs> Good shooting. And he fired over here. Plonk right there. Our AT gun must have been Montaraj. Just vaporized him. And the enemy is retreating, guys. Just a, an exceptional victory there against the MPLA. I did not expect it. Although I'm still not forgiving our commander for those artillery strikes. It's not going to happen. Nice little victory there. Okay. Three seconds before the retreat. Total victory. That's what I like to see, folks. 
32 killed on our side, 28 killed on the enemy side. Now, this is one of these strange occurrences where, despite us winning, we actually lost more prisoners than they did. They took 10 of our prisoners. But nonetheless, you can see here we got a gold medal, total control because we got every single flag. This is one of the benefits of not accepting that ceasefire. Let's get back to the operational map here. Okay, so yet another location um, where we have to defend with not only UNITA troops, but also um, South African infantry. And look at that. That's armor for sure. It's not going to be good. Here we go, folks. I can't wait to see what they give us for this fight. So we've got no control over the UNITA troops over there, and that's kind of a good thing because they've got an artillery spotter. We do, however, have a tremendous amount of control over the South African troops over here. And I want to start spreading them out. In fact, they're probably going to attack in this area. We'll reposition these guys in a second here. I'm not even familiar with that NATO symbol. See what it is. Trackers. Trackers. So these are, I guess, used to like locate the enemy. That's interesting. Let's have a look at the trackers. What do they got? RPKs. AKs. They must have some sort of benefit. I'm not familiar with these guys, I have to admit. Um, so let's just get them up there on the front. Trying to spread that line out again, make an intimidating front line here. But also provide some defense to our UNITA friends. And we are going to leave some troops at the crossroads because last time UNITA attacked exactly where we didn't expect them to. So let's get started here. Don't panic, Manushu. You're just in the middle of the jungle with no commander whatsoever. You'll be fine. Maybe not. Maybe not. Ngola. Now, this is our mortarman. Don't want him on the front, so I'm going to grab Makaba, <clears throat> Silva, Porto, the tracker, Vines, and let's just kind of push over here uh, with a covert move. I'm going to take Dujan, Dujan, Gonu, and I'm going to hunt in this direction. If they're trackers, I would expect them to be pretty good at scouting, so let's hope that, uh, that that's the case. Petrus Pata, something that I haven't seen in this game that I only think of now is Air Forces. Those flyboys were legends in, in close air support. Um, I think there is some close air support. It may not be on this. No, actually, I think there is close air support in this campaign. There's even helicopter support um, for the South Africans at some point, but we have to get deeper into the campaign. In this one in particular, they kind of give us stuff little by little. It's like you get a tank here and there. Uh, you get some air support here and there, uh, but not all the time. <clears throat> um, well, I don't want to take a water break. I want to keep fighting. <laughs> keep fighting. Water's overrated. Do you think these men were, you know, constantly worrying about the next source of water? Well, probably. This is Africa, after all. Let's see Karima and his trackers. So let's just take Karima alone, um, and we'll also head into the Klatea 2 area. Wow. We're just we're just trying to get a spot on the enemy. Thank you. Thank you, Twitch. Wow. <laughs> Got another Owen Wilson. Wow. Here we go. Not a single bit of contact, but we know how this usually works with the MPLA. They're not exactly forthcoming with their attacks. They just kind of show up out of nowhere. It's almost like a Soviet charge, and I think that to some degree, um, that recent battle, if that's any indication, they do have some Soviet tactics. I mean, they were, after all, armed by the Cubans. That's another thing. I don't know if this is true. 
but I've heard that when the Cubans did offer to arm the MPLA, the Soviets were quite upset. Um, I don't think they were they were interested in getting into a conflict uh, in Africa. Speaking of a conflict in Africa, we've now got tanks bearing down on us. Not good. I don't think we have wow. anything to stop them at all. Exactly, Owen Wilson. I'm so glad that Owen Wilson is interested in the historical knowledge that can be gleaned from this uh, stream. It's it's a real pleasure to have uh, to have him you know present here. I don't know if he's done any Hollywood movies recently, but uh, I hope he does. <laughs> Maybe we get like a high noon three. Every I know everybody's really wants that. <clears throat> oh no, more tanks. More tanks over here by Chumba. Yeah, this is not gonna be easy, guys. I might actually just retreat from this battle. Uh we'll see how they how our guys handle it. And uh let me go get some water if you were right back. <clears throat> Wow. We streamed for, <clears throat> I think, five hours today, so uh, please excuse me. I'm losing my voice here. Okay. Wow. What can I say? I've had this, this stream fever lately. Just kind of the desire to uh, to do some live streams and, and get some action here on screen. Oh, what's happened, boys? Tell me what's up. What's happening, boys? What's happening, boys? Why didn't you tell me what was happening? Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I just step away from for 30 seconds and we just got heavily bombarded? Is that what happened? Dag nabbit. Oh, wow. no. Oh, no. Yeah, guys, we are getting the hell off this battlefield. Um, this is a good change. This is a good time to withdraw. With a battle like this, there is nothing to be won. Let's just go ahead and get out of here. Absolutely nothing to be gleaned from this battle, but a tremendous amount of casualties. to that operation. All right. Okay, here we can actually end the turn. Um, I believe we're also getting tanks next turn. Here we go. We've actually already got some armored units. Uh, pushing one at the front here. Pushing one over here. In fact, we could probably start getting ready for an armored assault. This is going to be a very important enemy position. I'm just hoping that our tanks will come along with us. Uh, but I think we might actually have to wait till next turn for them to assist in this assault. So it's kind of a close call here. Um, Boa Vida and the Unita tanks might assist us here. So I'm going to take a big risk with Pinar. And I'm going to hit Van Dunham. Van Dunham! That's absolutely a South African fighting for MPLA. Wow. Um, and I think that's it. We're not going to mess over here. We're not going to mess around. You can see the helicopter there, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure if we should assault. Maybe we should. Fat Cat and B Tracker. What's up, guys? By the way, B Tracker, I'm so sorry. I just now saw your suggest a poll. Um, if you want to do a suggest a poll now, we so we, we're streaming this both on Twitch and on YouTube. This would be a cool time to get some sort of poll that both could answer. Um, Whatever you want to do, man. Whatever you want to... What sort of poll do you want me to put up? Um, because you did use your points to get that um, that feature. All right, let's get back up here. 
What do you guys think? Do we just assault? Oh, man. I don't think we do. I think we wait. And actually, they were going to attack us here anyway. So what we'll be able to do is next turn, we'll be able to kind of do an uppercut over here with our armor. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it could be a defensive battle or an offensive battle. MPLA is attacking on all fronts. Getting a lot of um, assistance from Unita, though. So I might go ahead and uh, assault here. And that's hoping that Unita actually joins us on this assault. Unita is actually attacking here in the south. But the, the areas we have to get are that location, that location, Saburanga, Tumpo, and I'm not sure the name of this one. But let's make it an offensive attack. And again, I'm just hoping the Unita tanks will follow us into victory here. Oh boy. Yeah, we don't have much here. Um, so Unita has got all of the armor. We've got five rattles, six maybe. So we're going to stay behind the Unita armor here and just advance slowly. Just make sure I don't have any other units. Nope, that's it. So we have to really hope that our AI uh, knows what it's doing. And I think the best thing to do here is just let the tanks move out first, let them do their thing, and then we'll know kind of how to proceed. So I think these flares are just letting us know that they plan to move, and look at that. Yeah, that's right, UNITA's got Soviet tanks too. Um, before they decided to work with the South Africans, they were a Marxist organization. And then, when they started getting South African support, they stopped being a Marxist organization. So, um, really interesting politics uh, here in Angola. But as you can see, our buddies do have some decent armor there. So I'm just staying put. Just take a look at our rattles. Relax, boys. Don't worry. Pestle is a little bit in an open area. Uh, enemy contact. Enemy infantry. Gotta get prepared for that. Um, Petrus, do you think a girl will try Wargame with the new South African DLC coming out? Oh, Wargame Red Dragon. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind. I'm just, I, I my biggest issue with all of, like, Wargame Red Dragon and Steel Division is it seems to me that people that have played that game for a while, they already, like, it's like, let me let me put it this way. It's like playing Magic the Gathering for the first time against somebody that's been playing it for years. Like, they've got such a superior knowledge of all the cards and stuff. And the same goes for War Game. It's like, they've got these deck builds that are just insane, and I don't really know what the hell I'm doing, you know? <laughs> but maybe you guys can walk me through it. I'll, I'll definitely put it on my maybe list. How about that? All right, here we go, guys. First attack, and we are responsible for the defense. For the most part, um, our Unita allies are here, but it's our guys on the road. So I'm actually going to push forward here with an assault uh, through the jungle there because we're trying to save Kestel and his men. Come on, boys. Make sure to stop the enemy. Look at that. They're also firing at our Unita allies at the Klatea region. This is actually a pretty decent location as long as they don't have any armor. Let's just take a look at the, the ground pounding they're taking here. Yeah, not looking great for MPLA. We've got a wounded man right there. Dead man right there. Not looking great. More enemy contact, though. And it's just going to be an additional en enemy push over here. In fact, they've got a mortar right there. But it looks like we killed the spotter. I think we've got a decent control over this area. Hey, bottle. Ask Anila to teach you how to play Steel Division 2, Den. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I wouldn't mind uh, either Steel Division 2 or War Game Red Dragon. I think I'd be more willing to learn War Game Red Dragon because, as you guys imagine, on, on this channel, on the YouTube channel, 
we have so much um so much world war ii stuff that frankly i'm getting a little bored of world war ii um i know that's hard to imagine but i'm i'm, I'm getting really like okay i've seen world war ii enough you know we don't need to do this anymore here we go calder i want him pushing up here Just look at that steady stream of fire. And the only concern are the APCs back here, but they're taking a while to get to the fight. How are our, our allied tanks doing? Let's take a look. So they are moving to the fight, I believe. Let's make sure they're... Nope, they're driving away. Of course they are. Why, why wouldn't they drive away from the actual battle? Damn it, Unita. Can somebody remind me why we're, why we're even allied with these guys? For goodness sakes. Come on, guys. We need a good old Joe Biden come on man right here, but we can't because YouTube will give us a copyright strike, unfortunately. I might, for the finale of the stream, I might switch over to Twitch exclusively so we can play some Afrikaans war music, uh, maybe some Portuguese MPLA war music too. Unfortunately, we can't get away with it on, um, on YouTube. <laughs> Astrid says, I honestly can't get enough of World War II. What I was really hoping when I saw that War Game Red Dragon DLC was I was hoping it was like a campaign, you know? Um, wow. But I think it's just a unit DLC. That would have been really, really cool. Just have a separate campaign. I guess War Game Red Dragon's not really known for its campaigns, though, right? Man, oh my goodness, Nelson Mandela himself. Thank you so much for showing up, Mr. President. I mean, first we had Owen Wilson as a fan of the stream. Now it's Nelson Mandela. Look at this. Oh man. Our Unita allies are in big trouble. Um, I think we need to focus exclusively on those vehicles. Same with Kessel. Just focus on those vehicles. Oh, that's trouble coming down the road for sure. Mandela, this calls for a... A what? A what? An Owen Wilson? <laughs> All right, here we go. Wow. There we go. <laughs> yes. Of course it does. Of course it does. Here we go. Come on, Kestel. It's him versus three APCs. Not going to be easy. Texas, how you doing, buddy? Guess what, man? We're streaming wow. this on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, right now, we're having kind of a contest between both of them to see who gets the most viewers. <laughs> Trying to still convince uh, the followers here on, Twi on, on, on YouTube to switch over. Um, and we actually discovered some interesting stuff, like the visual quality's better on Twitch. I think just because it's made for gaming or whatever. Look at this. We got you. We got you, MPLA. We are crushing them. We are crushing them. I think, I think folks will agree with me. Right now, we've been doing pretty well. We did have one fight where we had to run away in terror. But for the most part, what do you think, guys? I think we've been kicking ass here, honestly. Come on, Kestel. Doing a great job so far. We completely stopped that enemy column. Oh, what's this? Oh, you're the man, Texas. <laughs> well, why not both chilled and lady chilled and lady? <laughs> thank you, buddy. Thanks, man. Let's see who's winning right now. I think we got... Thank you, buddy. And his name is John Yes, C it is! It's John Cena! <laughs> Thank you so much, man. That's so kind of you. You are awesome.
And that's one of the benefits of Twitch. We get to have fun, for God's sake. I mean, virtually anything you do on YouTube these days is going to get a copyright strike. Or just a demon. Just usually just a demonetization. In fact, just with this title, uh, South African Border War, I'm not expecting this to be monetized. It's controversial. We can't talk about controversial things, guys. That's not okay, all right? Controversy belongs... Uh, I don't know. I, I guess just nowhere, really. Just, you know, talk about things that, that people are going to be okay with, that are, are genuinely, generally agreeable things. Then you'll be fine. On Twitch, it's hot tubs and things of that nature. <laughs> Horse masks. Those are fine. No big deal. Thank you so much, man. You're the best, Texas. Texas is the man. We got a certified Giga Chad in here, boys. We do. We do. Hot Tub War Gaming, says Mike. We can create a new genre, Agrippa in the Hot Tub War Gaming. Oh, my goodness. Or just imagine if, like, I just had a visual of, of like, a beautiful woman in a hot tub. That's, she's not doing anything related to the game, and I'm just, like, narrating over her as I play. That might that might be a winning combination. <laughs> Come on, Kesto. A third one, boys. We got three. We got three of the bastards. One, two, three. They're not pushing forward. Completely halted the MPLA column. And this is going to help out our Unita boys big time. You can just see, though, look at all of the markers here for enemy infantry. They've got, like, a, a massive force here. A lot more than we can actually see. So I'm staying put. In fact, I might even move Motlanti over here on the road so that we get a better shot against the enemy. What? What's going on? Oh, Texas. Thanks again, man. Texas Spirit gifted a tier one sub to a fat Thanks, cat buddy. from Sweden. You are the They've best. Given 12 gift subs in the channel. 12 gift subs in the channel, guys. 12 gift subs in the channel. Texas is the man. Now we have to play the Texas um, state song, but we can't do it here on the YouTube stream. So what I'll do is um, at the end of this battle or the next battle, um, and this is no offense to my, to my, YouTube, uh, my YouTube followers, I'm just going to stop the YouTube stream, go exclusively to Twitch so that we can listen to some wow. music. Um, and particularly because I want to listen to the, the Texas State song, but also I want to play some Afrikaans music. I want to play some MPLA music, um, Angolan war music, etc. So we're going to do that after this fight. I'm using Restream, so I'm not too familiar with it, but I think I can figure it out. Probably just um, stop one stream and uh, I'm sure there's a way of doing it anyway. No, <laughs> thanks, man. Bam. Texas Spirit gifted a tier one sub to Fenrak43. They have given 13 gift subs in the channel. Thanks again, dude. Oh my gosh. Thanks, man. Texas Spirit gifted a tier you one sub to You are just so cool, dude. They have given 14 gift subs in the channel. I've got to thank him here on YouTube as well. <clears throat> they say everything's bigger in Texas. And ain't it true, man. That is awesome. Making me hungry for some brisket too, Texas. All those gift subs. I, ha I haven't uh, eaten yet. I'm actually going to make some caldo verde. Which uh, the folks here in Angola would be familiar with. Really good stuff. It's going to sound boring to you guys, but it's kale soup with uh, Portuguese sausage. It's really, really good. Um, but kind of, uh, you know, I guess some people would consider it like a simple dish, but I, I love it. And since I'm an absolutely awful cook, it's one of the few things I can actually make pretty well. So I'm looking forward to that. But if brisket was on the menu, I'd go for that first. I'm trying to lose a few pounds, though, so I I've got to be careful here. I really do. Thank you so much, man. Oh my gosh, he's just firing them away. We got 16 viewers on Twitch right now. He's just firing them away. Thank Texas you, man. Texas Spirit gifted a tier one sub to B-Tracker. They have given 15 gift subs Oh my channel. goodness. 
The YouTube, the YouTube chat is slowly, slowly leaving to Twitch. You're doing it, man. You're doing it. Thank you, buddy. Look at that. We got six viewers on YouTube. We got 16 viewers on Twitch right now. This is so cool, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Texas. I think if not for Texas doing that, um, that would not have occurred. And I want to be clear, you know, I, I do a lot to, to do two channels at once. I'm not giving up on YouTube. I still want to bring you guys war gaming. I still want to bring you guys videos. Um, I've actually got to upload that Civil War episode pretty soon. Um, but, you know, the thing about Twitch streaming is... I don't know, it's just like interacting with you guys, being able to talk with you guys one-on-one -on -one is so enjoyable for me. And it makes the narration a lot easier. Because let's face it, if nothing's going on in the chat and nobody is engaging, then I don't know what the hell to say. You guys know me, for goodness sakes. You know Agrippa, you know? I'm not the brightest bulb in the box. <laughs> How much for a hot tub cam this month? Uh, I'm, uh, Petrus Potter says, I'm very certain that Texas Spirit is Mr. Beast's cooler cousin. <laughs> Everyone gets a sub on my watch, says Texas Spirit. Oh, you're the best, man. Thank you, dude. It's the Great Migration, man. We're gonna call it the Great Migration, thanks to Texas. Here we go, guys. Full-on attack with our rattles here. This is it. We're crushing them. I'm going to stop Montant right there. Although, I want to get past that vehicle. Let me stop Calder right there. Just cancel his movement. Get him, get him, get him. I'm glad we didn't push through the bush here because look at all those MPLA units. They might even be entrenched. Nope, not entrenched, but definitely in a good position. You are the man, dude. Don't you worry. We're going to get the Texas Anthem after this. Remember the Alamo. I do still think, though, I've said this before, that California has the best state song ever. <laughs> Texas is pretty good, too. Um, but California State Song is... I just freaking love it. All right. We're good here. Just look forward, son. You're fine. Just look at the enemy. That's a start. Turn the gun. Turn it that way. Yeah, he's not, he's not wanting to follow orders here. He's not undergoing any morale suppression, either. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, other enemy vehicle. Other enemy vehicle there. Shit. Get your eyes over here, man. Oh my gosh. Enemy it's vehicle just hit right rattles. behind here. The good for your body. The good for your health. That's actually Steve Brule for your health. Have some. Have some. Oh god. Thank you, man. I love the I love the Steve Rule bits. We gotta also give a very special thanks to Dave Jiju. Um for all the stuff on Twitch that you guys see, that was all Dave Jiju um that put that together. I've got no knowledge of stream labs or stream elements or any of that stuff. Um I absolutely wanna learn, but I am just not knowledgeable about that uh, in the slightest. And Dave Jiju put that all together. So also a really special thanks to him. Got all that Steve Rule stuff. We're, we're probably going to have to update it uh, now that a lot of people in the Discord are fans of uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia like I am. We might need to put in some new uh, some new stuff. But I, I always love Dr. Steve Rule. So what are the tanks doing? What are the tanks doing? So wow. I guess, I guess that they're trying to go around, but they're going so far out of the way. No, they're just cowards. They're just cowards. Carrie, get up here. We are fighting this entire battle on our own. I mean, it's unbelievable. The Unita allies haven't done a damn thing for us, although now we're finally undergoing some uh, morale penalties. Wow. Yes, indeed. Wow, indeed. <laughs> Let's jump over there. <laughs> Living in California, I only like the weather. Texas, our Texas. All hail our mighty state. That's another thing. Mike is also a huge fan of Texas. I believe he's been there several times. He's got some family there. So we've got a bunch of uh, Texans in the stream, which is pretty cool. It's still such a shame. It annoys me to no end. Wow. Um, I'll keep I'll keep screaming about it, that there's not a good Mexican-American war game. Just makes for such a good war, I think. 
Like, if you take Ultimate General Gettysburg, just make, like, Ultimate General Mexican-American War, that would be amazing. Let's see. Yeah, even our uh, APCs are pulling back here. There's just too many enemies. And they might have already taken out... Yep, they took out one of the APCs. But I'm not giving up. I mean, there's no real reason to. We've got tanks, or at least Unita does. Wow, I'm so proud of uh, the Twitch uh, chat. Unbelievable. This guy. <laughs> Is Mandela safe? Oh, good question. I don't think so. Yeah, it would. It would. There were, You need to have some sort of um, special abilities or something like that. Um, maybe even like weather effects. But I, yeah, it would be hard, tough to play as the Mexicans. Yeah, we're definitely running from this battle. Let's withdraw. The Unita allies can deal with this one on their own. Robin Roberts, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. I like it. Hey, Zeno, fellow Tigikians. Let's get into session, have cognition after cognition, and blow some charge. And for those of you that don't know, Robert Roberts is our resident Scientologist. Who says we don't accept everybody on this stream? <laughs> oh, boy. Good to see you, man. All right. Let's see. It is a defeat. Of course, we ran. Uh, let's get back to operation. Special thanks to my YouTube viewers um, and my Twitch viewers. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to switch over to Twitch now just because I do want to make sure that I play that state song for Texas because he's done so much for the stream here. It's really, really nice of him. Just such a generous guy. Uh, so let me end the YouTube portion of the stream. I hope I get this correctly. Um, and again, I, I know some people get annoyed. I don't understand why, but... I'm still going to say, um, you know, by all means, I'd love to have you guys all, all over on Twitch. I'm not going to give up on YouTube. I'm not going to stop uploading or anything like that. But the fact is, the visual quality is better on Twitch. We can play any songs we want on Twitch. We can have fun. We can even watch, you know, documentaries, things like that. So um, it's just a recommendation. But I am going to stop the YouTube stream. Thank you so much, guys, for stopping by. And let's see if this works. Hold on, because we're on restream. It's my first time attempting to stopping one stream and not the other. God help me. <laughs> Hold on. I want to make sure that I don't screw this up. Uh, thank you, dashboard. Okay, I think I figured it out. Thank you so much, guys. Um, just want to check to make sure that that's actually offline, guys. Okay. Here are three pieces of advice from eToro users on how to trade safely during a period of inc I don't want to risk it. Uh, I think we're still live actually. Um, just want to check. Yeah, I think we're still live. How are we going to do this? Maybe this end stream here. 